G'day, I'm Nick Bowdish. Today, uh, I just want to have a quick chat about risk and big dreams and knowing when to fold. Um, a few times this week, people, clients and just people who've sort of asked my opinion on uh, their business or their startup or whatever have, have talked about, have talked to me about how they want to continue to dream big and how they want to build and grow and, and uh, you know, either completely change a business model or completely invent a new business model and keep reviewing and keep reiterating their businesses and grow and grow and grow and innovate and, and all of those words, right? And all of that requires some risk. And risk itself, the word kind of sounds a bit, ugh, sounds a bit iffy because, you know, a lot of us are risk averse. A lot of us do not want to put ourselves out there, put our IP out there, uh, put our families through it, put our you know, self on the line for whatever reason. Um, and, and it's because, you know, risk sounds risky. You know, it sounds dangerous and it sounds yuck and it sounds like it could cost you a lot of money. And, you know, a lot of these things are things that people don't love to do. The thing is, though, all of this does require some risk. All, all of this kind of startup, small business thing even, you know, leaving your corporate job, leaving a job where there's a salary and you know your family is going to benefit from a regular income and taking a risk is a real strong part of, of what we do. Um, and you can mitigate that risk in different ways. You can keep your job going for as long as you can. You can have you know, a part-time job going when you first start your startup or your business or whatever. But in the end, you do have to put yourself out there and have a bit of a risk. And along the way, you have to continue to risk things, um, including your own, you know, sanity, <laughs> uh, but including your own, you know, um, professionalism and your own intellectual property and your own sort of gut, you know. And for a lot of people, that's a step too far, you know. For a lot of people, they say, well, I've just got to wait until I'm ready. And, and the wait until you're ready thing kind of frustrates me because, you know, I, I heard a lot, I hear a lot when people even talk about their family lives and talk about, you know, whether they're going to have children, whether they're going to have babies and when they're going to have babies. And, you know, people say, well, you know, I'm just going to wait till I'm ready. We, well, we might get married now, but we'll wait till we're ready. And, and I can, th I can remember thinking when I, before I, before we had our first baby, I was 37 years old when we had our first baby. And, um, some of you know, we've had three since, but you know, if I thought I was ready, I was obviously not anywhere near ready to have babies, but you know, who is, this is the point is, you know, if you wait until you're ready, you'll never do it. And it's the same with, it's the same with business and taking that step. You know, I know a lot of people, a lot of people talk to me who are in a job and they've got a part-time startup or a part-time business they're running or, or their partner might be running this part-time business and they just have to make that step to go and and for some people that's a very 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 big step uh, uh, you know and I admire that I admire that kind of common sense to to hold back and go geez we're not ready but the thing is if you wait until you're ready god you might never be and then that option or that dream might be lost so you know, the, I think that the other thing that I that I speak about and I think about when I talk to people who tell me that, especially, is I think, well, wait until who's ready? Wait until you're ready? Wait until they're ready? You know, wait until the market's ready? You know, a lot of us are, are, have an idea or a concept or a business or a startup that's that's new or, or you know, talks about new concepts or uh, new delivery systems, new platforms or whatever, and, and, and people are like, well... I have to wait until they're ready. I have to wait until the market is ready to take this on. And, and it's the same thing for me is I think, well, fuck, they might never be. You know, if um, if the likes of, you know, the Facebooks of the world and, and Snapchat or whatever didn't or waited until people were comfortable enough with their mobile phones to, to give them mobile first and mobile only content or a mobile only platform, you know, they would they would never they'd be languishing. They would never have come to be. So I think a lot of us need to push push the market a little bit to be ready. So, you know, there's two things there. Wait until I'm ready and or I'm not ready and wait until the market's ready. And I think both of them are a bit of a bullshit cop-out at times for, for people to sit on their hands and go, you know, I'll just cruise along a little bit longer. 
And I can tell you, as long as you wait, that clock keeps ticking and, you know, it might never be. And I think that's really sad. So, you know, the other thing is, I, I, I think about, well, who's saying this to you? Who's telling you that the market's not ready? Who's telling you that you're not ready? You know, is it you or is it your partner and your family and your friends and the community and other entrepreneurs and other inventors and, and whatever, you know, because a lot of that can be distraction and, and, and smoke and mirrors too. And that's even sadder, I think, you know, if, you, if you're just listening to people you don't even actually know or don't even, you know, they're not in the arena, they're not having a go, but you're listening to them about your own life and your own endeavor and your own creativity and your own curiosity. You know, never let anybody who is covering their own fear by attacking you for investigating your own curiosity win. Because they don't get that opportunity. That's bullshit. You know, you're in charge of that stuff. So, so, I think, you know, you have to think about a few things in, in, when you determine risk. Like, how, and this is what I think about, you know, the opposite of determining risk is dreaming big for me. You know, that curiosity will always overcome fear more than bravery or courage ever will. Curiosity is the go. Curiosity is the key to unlocking, you know, that stuff that you've held so long and worried about for so long. And here's a few things that I think about when I think about, well, how do I dream big? How to, how to dream big effectively? And the first thing I think about is, yeah, dream big, but in little chunks. You know, let yourself achieve little things along the way. Gamify yourself almost to have slight little achievements along the way rather than having to go the whole way before you accept that you've won or that you've succeeded or you've been a success or you've built something good, right? Keep the dream big, but keep the chunks little. Keep the stuff that you can achieve, the goals that you can achieve along the way little because that's going to make it easier to keep yourself going, to keep yourself motivated towards the end goal. The other thing I think about is I want to fail. Now, I don't want to fail miserably where I lose my house and my family and my reputation, but I want to make mistakes. And I think, you know, as I make mistakes, I grow from it. And as I make mistakes, my product and my curiosity and my creativity grows from it too. But importantly, so does the market. Every time the market or your customers see that you fuck something up but keep moving, that builds strength in your brand. That builds brand equity. Now, as long as you can, as long as you can go, whoa, that was wrong. That was a mistake on my my behalf. Sorry about that. Here's here's what we're going to do going forward. Like that's a really big step of the of the big dream is to have little mistakes along the way, but recover from them and fail and fail and grow and grow and fail and succeed. But be transparent along the way with all of those things. And then I think the biggest thing about dreaming big for me, this is just for me, is you've got to know when to fold them. Right, you've got to know when to pull the plug, when to say, you know what, that was not a good idea. The market was not ready for that. I was not ready for that. Um, the you know the the product we built wasn't good enough. The price point was wrong. Whatever it might be, but you've got to know when to walk away, because the big dream is one thing, and that's a beautiful thing. It's a fantastic thing. But if that big dream turns into a big nightmare, that affects your family, your partner, your marriage, your kids, your community. It affects other people who are trying to build the same sort of shit in the same sort of market as you. If you're hanging on and hanging on and hanging on, you're going to be miserable. And in that case, you might as well just rock up the whole thing and go and get a job for someone else. Where you can sit in a salary and do those things and not worry about you know, the corporation failing around you. If you're in our world, if you're in my world and you're building things and you're being creative and you're trying to win and you're trying to reiterate something until it wins, then you've got to know how to fail, but most most importantly, how to fold, how to go, well, enough's enough. I'm out now before I completely ruin everything. And that's something that I think a lot of people in this space, in this entrepreneurial startup, small business space, don't talk about. You know, a lot of people who are in my position sort of talk about, yeah, you've got to dream big, you've got to take risks, you've got to hustle, fucking word again. You've got to, you know, do all these things. But I think it's so much more important to think just when, at what point will you walk away? How much is too much? How much killing yourself and doggedly chasing something that isn't there and won't be is going to hurt you and your family and your friends and your community and your marriage and your relationships and everything else. You've got to know when to fold them. And the very final thing I'd, I'll finish with is the thing that I finish with often. 
in my thoughts and in, and in this sort of stuff is the, the great thing about dreaming big is taking risks. The biggest threat to taking risks is being afraid. So I would say to you today, as I've said to you many times before, what would you do if you weren't afraid? How big would your dream be if you weren't afraid? I hope you get out there and grab it today and keep working hard. Find your kindness. Have a great day. See ya.